Citizens of the world, I come before you to bring you news that will be very hard to comprehend. This time, they were right.
We all know the story of Noah and the Flood, but according to some researchers, there could be as many as 200 different deluge stories from ancient cultures throughout the world. So this begs the obvious question. In terms of science, what single causality could yield such a global diversity of deluge stories? For that, we look back to 1940 when a Chilean astronomer by the name of Carlos Ferrada first postulated an explanation that accounts for all of these deluge stories. An explanation based on two objects. One he calls the Black Star, and the other an object he called Hercobolus, or what we know today as Planet X or Nibiru. According to Ferrata, Hercobolus is a large comet planet charged with cosmic energy in an elliptical orbit between the two suns of our own solar system, Sol and its smaller, dark twin, Nemesis. A man of great intellect and insight, Ferrata tells us that this object does not follow established celestial laws, which in turn explains its bizarre behaviors. He also predicts that during this next coming flyby, this massive object will come within 14 million kilometers of Earth, and that it will be naked eye visible from every point of the globe. Yes, we will all see it, and we will photograph it. But when will we all come to believe our own eyes? Well, that might be quite another thing. Hopefully, it will be in time for us to find safety from the coming cataclysm. And what shall that be? It will be a horrific event predicted by Edgar Cayce, a great American psychic known as the Sleeping Prophet. A pole shift. And so, what would the celestial mechanics of such an event look like? It would look like the one that haunted Ferrata in this 1999 interview late in his life. There are so many things which is unfortunate. Mankind is not ready. The change comes. The destruction comes. And above all, will affect humanity in its existence, in its production, and in its own substance. As our research team watched Ferrata in this interview, what tore at our hearts were not his words, but rather the obvious pain of awareness etched on his face. We know that pain all too well, for it is an echo of our own, and the knowing of a horrific cataclysm to come, and that which causes it. And so we call it the Ferrata Casey Pole Shift, and it will happen when these massive objects pass close enough to gain a lithosphere lock on the Earth, thereby pulling the skin of our planet around. This will cause the pole shift predicted by Edgar Cayce over 90 years ago. Carlos Ferrata first began talking about Hercobolus, or what we call Planet X Nibiru, in 1940. And through all those decades of talking to audiences and giving TV interviews, in the back of his mind, you know he was seeing the celestial mechanics of the coming global cataclysm we're going to experience. And, you know, it makes you wonder, how did he see it in his mind? Well, what we're going to try and attempt in this program is to convey a sense of that to you as we explore that coming pole shift. In this program, we're going to take you into the future to show you a cataclysm that means, well, frankly, the end of life as we know it. But it will not be the end of us. Rather, humanity has a long journey ahead of it. And this is just going to be one waypoint along the path. But, as with all journeys, they do have a beginning. And that beginning for us is that first dawn of awareness about what is to come. And for that, we go to the past. In the first program in the Planet X 101 series, Who, What, When, Where, Why, and How, 
we explained how the search for Planet X first began in 1781. However, the chronological starting point for our journey today is much closer to our own time. In 1940, a Chilean astronomer by the name of Carlos Muñoz Ferrada first began talking about an object he called Hercobolus, or what we know today as Planet X or Nibiru. But he also talked about not one, but two objects. Hercobolus is the same planet Zachariah Sitchin, author of The Twelfth Planet, describes as Nibiru, according to his translations of the ancient Sumerian texts. And according to Sitchin, it is four times the size of Earth. But of even greater concern to us is the Black Sun, as Farada calls it. A binary twin to our own Sun that is 56 times the size of Earth. And it is the core object of a mini constellation we call the Planet X system which in turn orbits around our own Sun, much like a comet would. Therefore, Ferrata is the pivotal figure in this program because he was the first professional astronomer to talk about the Planet X system, as we call it, back in 1940. The small Sun he referred to as the Black Sun is actually a brown dwarf star known to present-day astronomers as Nemesis. Brown dwarfs are small protostars that lack the mass to sustain hydrogen fusion like Sol. Consequently, they are very dark stars and extremely difficult to find. It is why they are also referred to as failed stars. In fact, the existence of brown dwarf stars wasn't theorized until the 1960s, and back then they were initially called black dwarfs. Consequently, it wasn't until 1988 before the first brown dwarf was discovered. And as of 2012, over 1,800 of these brown dwarf stars have been discovered. We know them today as brown dwarfs thanks to American astronomer Jill Tarter, who first coined the term in 1975. It's interesting to note that the protagonist, Ellie Arroway, played by Jodie Foster, was based on Tartar's astronomical work. The modern hunt for Planet X began with the Deep Space Probe's Pioneer 10 launched in 1972 and Pioneer 11 launched in 1973. These missions established the existence of something of substantial mass because it had significantly altered the trajectories of both probes. In 1983, the infrared astronomical satellite, IRAS, was launched to image that mass. According to NASA, IRAS failed before the mission could be completed. However, several government whistleblowers have since come forward to say IRAS had in fact imaged Planet X. It is also important to know that the disclosures of these whistleblowers are consistent with the news accounts of that time. Most notable was a New York Times article published on January 30th, 1983, which states, More credence was given to the hypothesis that a brown dwarf accounts for the mysterious force. Moreover, a brown dwarf in the neighborhood might not reflect enough light to be seen far away, said Dr. John Anderson of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Keep that name in mind as we move forward to 1988. This is a 2013 capture of Dr. John Anderson's NASA Biopay. So what we know about this astronomer is that he does indeed work for NASA and that he has been following the topic of Planet X for years. Frankly, he's in a league of his own as the last of the honest NASA astronomers to come forward on this topic. In a June 14, 1988 interview with the Victoria Advocate titled Pioneer 10 Still Searching, Anderson is directly quoted as saying, We have a 90 to 99 percent confidence that Uranus and Neptune are being disturbed and by one candidate for that is a single Planet X. 
Sourced from the Google News Service, Yowza.com first published this Victoria Advocate interview with Dr. Anderson on March 18, 2012, in an article titled, The Planet X Cover-Up in the Mainstream Media. Immediately after publication of that article, the entire Victoria Advocate edition for that day was removed from the Google News Service site. No doubt, our tax dollars at work once again. Redactions aside, 1988 was still a bellwether year for Planet X research, thanks to the efforts of Dr. Robert S. Harrington, Chief Astronomer for the United States Naval Observatory, because in October of that year he published a paper titled The Location of Planet X. And here you see Dr. Harrington being interviewed by Zachariah Sitchin, author of The Twelfth Planet, for a network documentary. In that interview, Dr. Harrington showed Sitchin an orbital diagram for Planet X. Interestingly enough, in this illustration created by Dr. Harrington, we see the description, Orbit of Nibiru. The very same planet that Sitchin maintains exists according to his translation of the ancient Sumerian texts. It is likewise noteworthy that Harrington commissioned the construction of a special telescope for a Planet X sky survey, which was conducted in 1991 at the Black Birch Observatory in New Zealand. Those observations were based on Harrington's calculations, and the films were delivered directly to NASA and never seen again. And in a manner of speaking, neither was Harrington. As reported in our Yowza.com article, Planet X and the Mysterious Death of Dr. Robert Harrington, this courageous astronomer died on January 23, 1993, from a rapid onset of esophageal cancer. Many believed he was assassinated, as do we. Today, NASA has replaced the Planet X research of men like Anderson and Harrington with a Planet X debunker by the name of David Morrison, a man who maintains that Planet X does not exist and who never misses an opportunity to humiliate anyone with an interest in the topic. So in response to David Morrison, I offer my first Planet X article published in January 2002 as way of introducing a pithy insight from the man who helped me to write that article. He was Dr. Brian Joffrey Marsden, and at that time he was a senior astronomer at the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. Regrettably, he passed away in 2010, and to honor his memory, I believe something he once told me is the best way to respond to David Morrison. The failure to observe an object only means that you have failed to observe the object. It should be noted that following the mysterious death of astronomer Robert Harrington in 1993, the Planet X topic went dark in the mainstream media because it had become a death topic. And with that, we now take a big step forward to the year 2006. On April 26, 2006, Yowza.com was the first to break the story on the South Pole Telescope in terms of Planet X. The SPT, as it is commonly referred to as, is a 10-meter diameter telescope located at the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station in Antarctica. Simply put, it is the ideal infrared telescope for observing anything rising up from the southern skies like the Planet X system and its brown dwarf. The official reasons given for constructing this telescope in the most inhospitable region of the world sound noble, but in fact do not justify the expense. The Admonson Scott South Pole Station is only accessible by way of specially modified C-130 aircraft. Consequently, flying in the telescope and its support building was a Herculean effort. 
This is why the same exact science could have been done for a fraction of the cost elsewhere in the Southern Hemisphere. So why not save the money with a better location? Well, as we pointed out in our article, this was the ideal place to observe the southern approach of the Planet X system at that time. Then came the news we hoped for in 2008. A whistleblower posted Planet X images taken with the SPT on YouTube under the name Nibiru Shock 2012. Here you see the images he posted in his video that were captured by the SPT in January 2008. What is clearly obvious here is that we are looking at a mini constellation and not a single object. So let's take an enhanced look at these images. What we see is the strong infrared signature of a brown dwarf star and between five to seven planets in orbit around it depending on how you define a planet. In this close-up provided by Nibiru Shock 2012, he also points out that the brown dwarf has a tail. This can be attributed to the fact that Nemesis, the brown dwarf seen here in the center of the image, is surrounded by a massive dust disk. Ergo, if we could actually see this brown dwarf in space, it would likely look something similar to this animation. The problem this presents for us here on Earth is that at some point in the future we will pass through this dust disk if we're not already doing so. In addition to the January 2008 images provided by Nibiru Shock 2012, a second whistleblower came forward in May of that year with another SPT image. This second whistleblower named his SPT source in the video and the government removed it within hours after it was up. With this in mind, we have redacted that information so that for the first time, you can see what his source provided him. And this brings us to the final step in our pole shift chronology. On February 11th, 2013, we published our YouTube video titled Object of Interest as Seen from the Turrialba Volcano. Using surveillance camera images captured from the Turrialba Volcano, we began ongoing observations of an object I initially dubbed Blue Bonnet on January 7th of that year. The site for this surveillance camera is on the 10th parallel and at an altitude of approximately 11,000 feet with a clear view to the southwest. Our analysis also shows that this object entered the constellation Ophiuchus on December 1, 2012 and was well inside that constellation as of December 21, 2012. This means that the prophecy of Nostradamus for this object was in fact fulfilled exactly as predicted. Blue Bonnet, as we first called it, is near the sun, and so with all objects near to the sun, it can only be observed before sunrise or before sunset. Also note, we eliminated all of the expected explanations for this object, such as it being the planet Venus, which it is not. In fact, this is not a cataloged object and it has been observed from this location with not one, but with three uniquely different camera systems since early 2010. Having captured literally hundreds of images of this object ourselves, we began to wonder if Blue Bonnet, as we called it, was actually Nibiru, the outermost orbital of the Planet X system. Well, we got an answer. On July 12, 2013, a video titled, A Cyclical Storm Bruise, was posted by the Zero Zero Skyview team. This highly capable group of amateur astronomers confirmed our suspicion that we had in fact been observing Nibiru all this time. In their video, they state, We have researched the object and here are our findings. Here you see our object, Blue Bonnet, which we now know to be Nibiru and which has been observed since early 2010 from surveillance cameras at the Turrialba volcano in Costa Rica. Likewise, the Zero Zero Skyview team also confirms 
that we first observed it in the constellation Ophiuchus. According to their findings, Nibiru, or blue bonnet if you will, is the outermost orbital of the Planet X system. Please keep in mind that the celestial mechanics of what is going to happen in our near future are so complex that it's really impossible to say with any certainty exactly what is going to happen and when. Citizens of the world, I come before you to bring you news that will be very hard to comprehend. This time, they were right. <laughs> 